In this video, I'd like to talk more about the geometric series formulas. And in particular, I'd like to compare the two. So this top formula in blue comes from a finite geometric series. And often we call this S sub N, where N, remember, is the number of terms in the series. A is our starting value and R is our common ratio. So if you see S sub 10, this is a geometric series with 10 terms in it. And below that in orange here, we have the infinite geometric series, which we usually just call S since there's an infinite amount of terms for this. And you can notice the formulas are fairly similar, but they're not exactly the same. In fact, the finite one is a bit more complicated than the infinite one. But I want to show you that when you consider the finite one and you let the term value approach infinity. So this is more of an idea from calculus, or at least the basics of calculus, where we talk about limits. But if we let this term value get bigger and bigger, what I want to show you is that this formula, this sum for a finite geometric series will start to approach the formula for the infinite geometric series. So let's make some space and just copy both of these and we can paste them down below so that we can talk about it. So remember the orange one is our infinite one, the blue one is our finite one. And remember that our infinite one has a condition that we need for it to actually converge. So let's write that down and we'll start from there. So this we'd say will converge, it will actually approach some value when the common ratio R is a fraction. So it's gotta be less than one and bigger than negative one. If it's some value greater than one or bigger than negative one, or I should say less than negative one, so more negative, then in those cases, it will diverge. The sum will just get bigger and bigger and it will approach infinity as the term value approaches infinity. So we wanna compare these two. Remember, we're gonna set the term number as n and let it approach infinity. So in the calculus language, we're saying we're taking a limit here as n goes to infinity, but we don't need that yet. And so the terms are gonna get bigger and bigger. And what I want to show you is that as we let the term value get bigger and bigger and approach infinity, that this formula will become this formula. But for this to happen, we need this condition. We need R, or we can say the absolute value of R, to be less than 1. So it has to be a fraction. And basically, we're thinking about this term up top here. And what happens as R to the N the nth power changes as n gets bigger and bigger. So let's look at that. So we want to consider r to the n when the absolute value of r is less than 1, or when r is a fraction between minus 1 and 1. And we're not going to get too far into this, since really this is a, a topic for calculus, but we do want to be able to think it through, because it does make intuitive sense what's going to happen to it. And Think about some specific example. Think about maybe the fraction 1 half. And we're going to raise it to different powers. So if we square it, we get a fourth. If we raise it to the third, we get 1 eighth. If we raise it, let's go even bigger, to maybe the sixth power. So that would be 1 over 64. So you can see that as n gets bigger and bigger, so we can say as n approaches infinity for one half raised to the nth power, that this is going to approach zero. Since we can see that pattern, as we raise a fraction to higher and higher exponents, the value gets smaller and smaller. And that should make sense because the numerator, especially in this case, is fixed at one and the denominator is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you raise to higher and higher powers. So the overall fraction will get smaller and smaller. And I encourage you, 
pause the video and test this out with a fraction of your own choosing. It gets a little bit more complicated when maybe you look at like two thirds as n gets bigger and bigger, but the same thing's gonna happen. Since in the numerator, you have a number that's smaller than your denominator. So as you raise these, the numerator and denominator to higher and higher powers, the denominator is gonna get bigger much faster than the numerator. And so overall, the fraction will approach zero, just like in this case. And any fraction you try this with, that will be the case. So in general, we would say this term r sub n, or r to the nth power when r is a fraction, this will approach zero as n gets bigger. So as n goes to infinity, r to the n will approach zero. And because of that, in our formula here, let's make just a bit more room, we'll keep the original infinite formula in the picture. Basically what happens is that this goes away. This is just equal to zero. And so you get a times one minus zero over one minus r, but this is just one, and so you just get a up top. So a over one minus r. And in a calculus class, you'll explore this in more detail, but with just the basic understandings of algebra, you can at least understand what's going on here. That when you raise fractions to higher and higher powers, the overall fraction is going to get smaller and smaller. And so this term here in our finite geometric series formula, this term will approach zero as the term values approach infinity. So when we make this an infinite sum, it does go back to our infinite geometric series formula.